Hello, this is a quick video on Monopoly, sadly not the board game I just lost, so in a bit of a bitter mood. Anila, if you're watching this, I could totally beat you. Just the very basics, I'm sure you'll remember this from last year or GCSE or whenever. Monopoly is basically when the output of the industry, the, all the output of one industry is produced by a single firm. So say in the fishing market, if there was only one fisherman who got all the fish, he would have a monopoly. You often have barriers to entry so other new firms can't enter the market. This is often stuff like sunk costs, so firms simply can't afford to enter the market. Legally we say you've got a monopoly when you've got 25% plus of the market share. That's also when you've got market power. I think Tesco had market power for quite a long time. Don't know if it still does after that profit scandal, but it definitely had it last year. Monopolies are generally considered to be bad because they restrict output in order to put up prices. In a monopoly situation, the average revenue curve is going to be half as steep as the marginal revenue curve. We know that for profit maximisation, marginal cost needs to equal marginal revenue. And you see on that diagram there, this occurs at price X. So we're producing quantity Z, but we're going to sell it at price X, since that's the sort of location on the demand curve. Demand is equal to average revenue, and in perfect competition, average revenue curve and the marginal revenue curve would be the same. But now they're two different curves, so the marginal revenue curve is twice as steep. So the same as we looked at when we looked at perfect competition for this monopoly situation, total revenue is price times units, which is XZ. Total cost is average total cost times output, which is YZ. Total profit is total revenue minus total cost, which is XZ minus YZ. And we can see here that X is quite a bit above Y. So we're making lots of profit, we're making a positive level of profit, which is super normal profit. Typically a monopoly won't produce at the lowest level of the average total cost curve, so it's not productively efficient. Uh, we say that it's X inefficient, which means it's not reducing its cost to the lowest possible level. So you know how we looked at productively efficient, allocatively efficient, and dynamically efficient. This is a different one. This is X inefficient. So when you're not keeping costs as low as possible. So this typically won't occur in a perfect market since firms can't afford to not have the lowest cost possible. So we priced out of the market. Whereas in a monopoly situation, it can happen because a monopoly has no competition. There's no one stopping them from you know, selling it for whatever price they want really, so they don't need to keep their costs so low. So I know the burning question on your mind is where do firms get a monopoly power from? Well, patent laws is a big one, so the grant of a temporary monopoly rights over a new product. So if you come up with an idea for a new game, for example Monopoly, you've got the right to say, look, no one else can produce this for another 50 years or whatever, and therefore you're, you essentially have a monopoly in that market because you're the only one that is able to sell it. Another one is nationalisation, which is when a firm or industry is taken into public ownership, so the government will prohibit competition by law. This is because the government thinks that it's beneficial for there to only be one producer, or they might want to have a lot of control over it because they think it would need too much regulation if it was left to the private sector, that sort of thing. Another one is limit pricing, which is basically when the incumbent or the existing firm exploits economies of scale. So it's going to set its price low, and really low, which means that other firms can't enter the industry. So imagine if you've got a big firm and you're able to produce on your minimum efficient scale. For other firms to come in, they wouldn't be able to get straight down to that level of output, which would mean their price would be higher because their costs would be higher. So limit pricing is basically when you put your prices low enough that no one else can enter the market. The next one is quite similar, it's basically fixed costs, which is when you a firm that's already in the market, the incumbent firm, creates expensive fixed costs. So say you're selling perfume and I'm selling perfume, but I want to enter the industry and you've got a monopoly. You might suddenly put out a massive advertising campaign, and I simply can't afford to compete with that. If I want to get more market share, I'd have to pay a lot of money, and I wouldn't necessarily be sure about how it would come off. And that's a sunk cost, because obviously once you paid for that, once you paid for your advertising campaign, you can't get that money back. Product differentiation is basically when a firm has a way of distinguishing its product from its competitors. So I know of a lot of drinks that are actually all made by the same company. So it's a lot harder for a new firm to enter because there are so many drinks already out there that are established. Whereas if there was only one, say Coca-Cola decided to only sell one type of drink, that would make it easier for a new firm to come in and compete since you only have one sort of product to compete with. And the final one is control of raw materials, which is when a firm basically has control of raw materials so it can force the price up. It can say to other companies, look, you're going to have to pay a bit more for this, which is going to price them out of the market sort of thing. So I know that we've already looked at different types of integration and say we had, I believe it would be vertical integration and it would be backward vertical integration. So say you're selling pencils and you decide to backward vertically integrate and you buy trees 
because that's what pencils are made of, it's much harder for me to come in because you can set the price of wood from the trees a lot harder. Harder? Higher. <laughs> Ignore me. When we think of a firm, we always assume that its main priority is going to profit maximise, which is when MR equals MC at A on that diagram there. And that's obviously the smallest level of output possible for a monopoly. If it can restrict output as much as possible, that means it can make the most profit because it can charge the most. But this might not actually always be its ultimate objective. So, for example, we could produce at B, which is our revenue maximising objective, which is when we produce until marginal revenue equals zero. So basically the monopoly will keep producing and keep producing and keep producing until it gains no additional revenue from producing an extra unit of output, at which point there's obviously no point in the monopoly continuing to produce. Sorry, I just went to go over Penguin. The joke was terrible if you want to hear it. Why was the Penguin so popular? Because he was an ice guy. <laughs> That's terrible. Allocative efficiency occurs when you're producing at the point where marginal cost is equal to average revenue. This is also known as marginal cost pricing. Obviously, for us to have allocative efficiency, it means that the marginal cost of the last unit is equal to the marginal benefit gained from producing it. And finally, D, which is when average total cost is equal to average revenue, which is when a firm makes normal profits. This is called average cost pricing. Basically, the money that it's paying to produce the product is exactly the same as the money it's charging. Although that's obviously taking opportunity costs and such like into account. A monopoly would never do this. It wouldn't really need to do this it's, unless it wanted to force other firms out of the market. It's much better off making more profit at a place like A. But if you look at the difference between A and D, D is where you'd be producing in a situation of perfect competition because that is the normal profit sort of competition sort of state that's the state where you'd be where everyone's making normal profits which is what you would make in a perfect market and if you look at a look how much less output the monopoly is producing at a natural monopolies happen when it's most efficient for production to occur in one firm for example um, the water company there's no point having 50 pipes running along we may as well just have one pipe taking one firm's water from one place to another duplication would be unnecessary and wasteful as it says on the screen there also it's such high capital costs imagine the cost of putting another pipe in just to have a bit of extra competition there's no point in doing that that's a natural monopoly also if your MES your minimum efficient skill is at a high output level so if we look at this diagram here if it is a lot of output to reach A, you're much better off having a monopoly than a few smaller firms. So I was making the PowerPoint this morning, I decided to draw some crosses on. So we could have a situation where we had two firms producing, which would be the green firms. Obviously in real life there'll be more firms than this, but just for visual sake. So we can either have two firms producing the green ones or one firm producing the orange one. The orange one has a much lower cost of production since it's reached its minimum efficient scale. Therefore it's better to have a monopoly in this situation. That's a natural monopoly situation. Definitely a good point to slip into any essay about monopolies if the question is, are monopolies always bad? There's your answer. Let's look at profit maximisation. If a pr monopoly wants to make the most profit possible, it will restrict output. So in this situation it will produce at Q1 because that is the point at which marginal revenue is equal to long-run marginal cost. If we look here, we can see the amount of profit they're going to be making is the difference between average revenue and long-run average total cost. So that is the little rectangle there, RPXV. That's basically some supernormal profits. Authorities probably won't like this, so they're likely to try to regulate, break up the monopoly, or use price controls. A much better sort of situation for the economy as a whole would be a situation of allocative efficiency which would occur if the monopoly produced at Q2 because this would be the stage at which average revenue is equal to marginal cost. So if we see here that would be producing a lot more and also selling at a much lower price. However the monopoly would actually make a loss here of AB so the government would have to subsidise if it wanted the monopoly to produce this much. Obviously this loss occurs since average total cost would be greater than average revenue. A nice simple penultimate slide here basically looking at the consumer and producer surplus. The consumer surplus is basically the amount that the consumer pays less than the amount they've been prepared to pay. So for example if we look at this diagram here, at point B on that diagram there was somebody who was prepared to pay price B for the good or service but instead it's paying price C because it's paying sort of the equilibrium price. So the consumer surplus there is ABC. 
producer surplus is the amount charged more than the amount that they would have been prepared to charge. So you can see there, they would have been prepared to sell one unit at E, instead of they're selling their unit at C, because that's the equilibrium sort of price. So it's getting a producer surplus of A, C, E. Ace. Final slide. Do, 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 do. Monopoly and efficiency. Basically this diagram here at the bottom there basically demonstrates why a monopoly isn't the most efficient situation. So if we imagine a perfectly competitive market, which is obviously the optimum sort of market, and we ignore the marginal revenue curve, because obviously in a perfectly competitive market marginal revenue is equal to average revenue. If we did have a perfectly competitive situation, we'd be producing quantity QC, and if you look at the diagram there, we'd be selling at price PC. So the consumer surplus would be size EFG. don't know if you can actually read the diagram there, because it's quite small. But essentially that's what it would be in a perfectly competitive market. However, in the monopolised industry, a monopoly will equate MR and MC to maximise profit instead. If we look at the diagram again, if we're equating MR and MC, we'll be selling at price PM, which is a higher price, so worse for the consumers. We'll be selling quantity QM, which is lower quantity, worse for the consumers. And the consumer surplus, if you look, is a bit smaller, actually. It's that small triangle at the top, EHI. So this means that the consumer is basically losing out. The monopoly will never actually produce more than QM because MC is greater than MR and that would diminish profits. There's no point in a monopoly producing beyond the stage at which MR is equal to MC because that means the extra unit would cost more to produce than they'd be getting back from selling it and that's just no point. I mean obviously there are situations in which that could be good but in general that's considered bad especially for a monopoly, a successful thriving monopoly. Obviously, in a monopoly situation, the marginal cost of producing the last unit there is QMJ, so it's the level J on the diagram, whereas the price it's selling it for will be QMI, because that's the level on the demand curve, which is basically a profit of IJ, that sort of distance there, which is really good for a monopoly, it wants to make profit. However, it's not so good for the consumer, and we actually have a dead weight loss, which is basically when there's a reduction in the consumer and producer surplus, because output's been restricted to less than the optimum level. So if we had it at the perfect sort of ideal situation, we'd have the uh, consumer surplus of EGF, and that was what we said earlier, that's consumer surplus in a perfectly competitive market, whereas now in the monopolised industry, our consumer surplus is EHI. So we've actually got a dead weight loss of KJG. Sorry that explanation got a bit long-winded. Turn in next time for a video on... I don't even know what the video's on now. I know discrimination. What fun. A video all about price discrimination. See you then. Hope this video's helped. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.